the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I forgot one announcement. Uh, some people have asked me about uh, the Pope's intentions. What does that mean? Uh, the Pope has official intentions, regardless anything that he's, his personal intentions, uh, the official intentions of the Pope all, also include uh, the propagation of the faith and triumph of the church, the conversion of sinners, and the extirpation of heresy. So many people have asked about that. I, I want to let you all know. So I was hoping today uh, to give a sermon on a different topic than what we've been hearing recently, uh, but events dictate otherwise. Uh, we continue to see developments that require attention. If you recall, there was the Bishop McCarrick scandal, the abuse of minors, its systematic cover-up, a Pennsylvania grand jury report into the matter, and now a letter from the former Apostolic Nuncio to the United States implicating the Vatican in the scandals, rumors of involvement by the U.S. Department of Justice, and calls for papal resignation. Uh, these are seismic events in the church. To give you an idea, the last time we had events of this magnitude uh, was 600 years ago. It was during the Great Western Schism in the 1400s, 13 or 1400s. So we haven't seen anything of this uh, size, this magnitude uh, in, in centuries. This is a huge events which are happening in the church these days. And I would like to be clear that while uh, these events are painful and embarrassing for our church, they're also necessary. This is part of the church purification. And so along with whatever feelings you may have, uh, relief can be one of them. Relief and peace. Now at this point, too, I would like to offer an apology to the victims of the abuse scandals and also to the rest of you for not mentioning this sooner. This is something that should have been mentioned uh, at the very beginning. So I would like to apologize to the victims of this abuse as a representative of the church for what they have suffered. Because of all people who are suffering in this account, they're the ones who are suffering the most. With any other scandal or any other tragedy that it can occur to a person, any loss of, of limb or a family member or tragedy or disaster or whatever, you can go to a priest for comfort. But who do you go to when the priest is the source of the pain? And how can you, how can you come into a church when that's, God forbid, where it happened? So many people are in this position. And so we certainly need to keep them in our prayers and also give them our gratitude because it's because of their coming forward, their, their, their bringing forth these scandals that the church is able to be purified of the rot that has been there. And bringing these scandals to light, talking about these scandals, thinking about them is the last thing an abuse victim wants to do, wants to forget about it. So we certainly owe them our prayers and our gratitude. And in hearing of these cases coming out, especially the reports from the grand jury case, 300 priests indicated, 1,000 victims, my heart sank. I thought this is, I didn't know it was this bad. 300 priests out there right now, guilty of abusing 1,000, perhaps more children currently. I thought that was all over with. I remember the accusations in, in the early 2000s. I thought we were done with this. I thought it was over. So I wanted to get detailed statistics from this report to find out how many are old, how many are new. What are the details of this case? How many priests? Exactly. It was hard to find. I actually couldn't, couldn't find anywhere online. I'm certain I'm not very good at searching. I, I couldn't find anything with this, this kind of statistics. 
I did find, though, that a grand jury um, actually has no legal force. It's a pre-investigation into allegations to determine if there's enough evidence to go to court. I thought it was like a post-court thing, but it's a pre-court. And it was not 300 priests, but 300 priests, deacons, and seminarians. It was a spread. And of those, 100 of them are already deceased from old age. The oldest case in the Pennsylvania uh, uh, indictment uh, was from 1930, from a priest who had been born in 1890-something. So this, this, this Pennsylvania grand jury report was like every skeleton in the closet in Pennsylvania. It was every case they could, they could possibly dredge up. And that's bad. That's not good. But I, I, was, I was happy to hear it wasn't all new. These were not new cases. By the way, the other statistic was 81% of them involved pederasty, which is adult males preying on teenage boys. That's a homosexual problem. It's not a child abuse problem, not a, not a pedophile problem. It's another uh, statistic or, or, or term they try to throw out there. So I, I began to do some research. I wanted to know. I wanted to know statistics. What exactly are we facing? What are we dealing with? How many of these abuses had happened total? How many were new? All that. I, I, like I said, I couldn't find data. I had to make up my own. So what I'm about to give you are the statistics that I found. So if anybody out there is a better mathematician than me, or a better statistician, let me know. I'm, I'm open to correction. But I'm wondering, if these results are true, why haven't we heard about these before? Why am I the only one saying this? I think you may be surprised also. For my statistics I used for the Catholic data, uh, from, I, it came from the Center for Applied Research in the Apostolate. Other statistical data came from the public domain. So how many abuse cases were there? Have there been in the United States? Records go back to 1965, so that's just about 70 years. Total number of cases was 11,000. In the whole United States, all 50 states, military archdiocese, District of Columbia, etc. Now that's 11,000 too many. Right, one is too many when we're talking about this kind of abuse. But I was surprised. It was, it was less than I thought. The way the media made it sound, this was happening everywhere all the time. 11,000 cases. And cases came out. There were an ori original complaints in the 70s and 80s. But then after 2002, right, after it, it, the first scandal broke, more allegations came out. Thousands more allegations came out after 2002. People who hadn't, had been silent, hadn't said anything, now it was public, now it was, it was made in the open domain. They said, if you've been abused, let us know. The church wants to make restitution. The church wants to apologize. Thousands more cases came out after 2002, which had happened 30 and 40 years ago. So this is not just simply people volunteering, but it's people being encouraged to come and tell us. It's 11,000. So what's the percentage? Okay, 11,000 abuses, but out of how many children? Out of how many priests? Well, it's been pretty steady since 1965, actually 1965, 1970. There's been around 60,000 clergy, priests and deacons combined. It's, it's roughly hovered around 60,000 for nearly 70 years. Priests' numbers have gone down, but permanent deacon numbers have gone up, and that's included. There are about... Three to four million Catholic children under the age of 18, that's who's included in the study, uh, being, uh, being abused. Three to four million Catholic children under 18 in, enrolled in religious education programs in the church or, or schools uh, out of 13 to 18 million Catholic children in the United States. 18 million Catholic children total, three to four million in the schools, and that number is also roughly the, the, the same. So searching through these, for these statistics, uh, the first scandal is the fact that there are abusing priests. That's the scandal. 11,000 cases of child abuse? This is crazy. There, there shouldn't be one. That's why we, and even the world at large, is, is scandalized at this. Because even though people may, may not like the church, people may discredit the church, people may put down the church, they still recognize priests are different. 
I have an older brother who's a priest. He's in, he's in uh, uh, Kansas City. And he made the point that you don't find the average person walking up to a rabbi or a Protestant minister and tell, tell them their problems and expect them to care. But people do that to a Catholic priest. They walk right up to a priest and start telling them about, about their divorce, their family, their troubles, and they expect that priest to care. And guess what? He does. That's why this is a scandal. The first scandal. And there are many more victims and predators. 11,000. It doesn't mean there's 11,000 priests and clergy. It, it, there's 11,000 victims from the same clergy over and over again. And that leads into the second scandal. The cover-up. It was known by the hierarchy. The, the, the lead of the grand jury report says he, he, he's mind-boggled that the Vatican and these bishops had detailed reports of all these cases. They knew about it, and they didn't do anything. They covered it up. They sent it to the Vatican. Nothing happened. They transferred the priest. Sent him to rehabilitation, brought him back, let him loose again. The numbers went up. That's the second scandal. And that's the real scandal. And in that regards, the Pennsylvania grand jury, the media, they're right. They're right to persecute the church hierarchy for that. Criminal negligence. Now, is it getting worse? Is this a current problem within the church? Right? Here's where the media is to blame. This is where their hatred of the church comes out. Maybe they care about children, maybe not. But they hate the church. And we'll see. 11,000 cases total in these past 50 years. And 9,749 of them, 90%, occurred in the two decades of 1970 and 1980. Are we surprised that those are the two decades where most of them occurred? Sexual revolution, revolution in the church. 700 cases occurred in the 1990s. In the 2000s, there were 351 cases. From 2010 to 2014, there were 101 new cases. In 2015 and in 2016, there were nine abuse allegations each year. Last year in 2017, the number of allegations, new allegations made against clergy by Catholic children was four. Four children out of 18 million complained of abuse by Catholic clergymen. Is the media telling you that? I had to search to find that out. So the good news is, this is a problem which is getting better. Every single year, massively better. From the beginning of the abuse records in, in the 1960s and 70s, from that 11,000 cases, the Catholic Church has reduced abuse accusations by 99.9%. Now let's, let's think about that for a minute. The statistics you've just heard. Four in 18 million. Those are, those are the chances last year, or those are the statistics of a child being abused. What are four in, 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 in 18 million chances? A person's got a five times higher chance of being struck by lightning. The church cares about children. We did something about this problem. I would even go so far as to call those numbers, those statistics, miraculous. I would challenge any other institution out there, public or private, to come up with better statistics. A better statistic than 0.00002%. So why does the press want to make it seem like there are these pedophile priests everywhere? Which, by the way, 81% of accusations were homosexual. Why is the media making this out to be such a huge problem? Are they that concerned about children? They really care that much that they're going to spend all this time and effort to protect four more children this year from being abused by Catholic clergy? They were. Let's look at the statistics for public schools. Why are these lawyers, the press, the media so concerned about children that they're looking to their own? Why are Catholic children so much more important than your own Protestant, atheist, Jewish children in the public schools? Well, I couldn't really find many statistics on public schools. They don't keep very good records 
on this kind of thing. Financial, financial stuff, sure, abuse cases, not so concerned about detailed records there. But I found two studies of sexual abuse in public schools, one from the year 2000 and another from the year 2015. And interestingly, the statistics reached were very similar, almost identical to each other, in fact, between those two years. The U.S. Census Bureau reported about 50, 55 million children in the public schools, both in 2000 and 2015. Now, the 2000 report was done by the American Association of University Women and concluded that as many as 10% of children in grades K through 11 reported some kind of abuse from an educator or school employee. The nationwide estimate from this study found up to three and a half million children were being sexually abused in public schools by an educator, a staff member, a teacher, or whatever. Fifteen years later, another study found the problem didn't seem to be getting any better. A group called Sesame concluded once again around three to four million students were being abused in public schools. So there we go. Three and a half million allegations against the public school system of child sexual abuse in the period from 2000 to 2015. Well, in that same period, the accusations against the church were 474. 400 to 4 million. If you were concerned about children, which institution would you be investigating? So you have to realize it's not really about the children as much as they want to say that. The press and the lawyers, oh, it's about the children, the children. No, it's not. The children are your vehicle to attack the church. And don't be fooled. It's an attack against the church. Yes, uh, these, these evil men in the church, the church hierarchy, somehow that they got up there, uh, that's our enemy too. Right? But there's an enemy within the church and there's an enemy outside the church. And just because our enemy outside the church is also attacking our enemy in the church, doesn't mean they're our friend. Because after the world gets, those, gets the hierarchy, they're coming after us. Right, our enemies are the devil, the flesh, and the world. Now, I'm not, I do want, not want to make this uh, sound in any way like I'm defending an abusive priest. Right, simply because I, I'm pointing out the media's attack on our church. I want to be clear. Uh, there's no defense, no excuse for an abusive priest. Four cases last year, that's four too many. In hearing of that, we as Catholics, we should be horrified, shocked and horrified. Four children last year were abused by priests, that's horrible. When a non-Catholic looks at these statistics, however, they should be shocked and embarrassed at themselves. How are the statistics of the Catholic Church so low? The grand jury report in Pennsylvania, while they are right to blame the abusers and the hierarchy, ought at the same time to be asking the question, what is the Catholic Church doing that is so right to get their numbers so low? How can we learn from you, Catholic Church, to reduce our statistics from 6% abuse per year to 0.00002%? As of last year, a child today is 250,000 times safer around a Catholic priest than he is around a public school educator. Do we hear those statistics? Even if I'm off by a thousand percent, this would mean that the, the worst period of abuse in church history in the past 50 years, the worst decades of our abuse, would still be a hundred times better than, than the average public school abuse record. We should keep in mind, abuse doesn't just happen in schools, right, or by priests. Chances nowadays are greater to be hit by a meteor. Uh, but uh, the problem is, is evil, right? The greatest number of abusers are family members. The problem's evil in the heart. Right? There's not a program, there's not, there's not a, uh, some kind of legislation that can be made to stop the problem. It's in the heart. And there's the scandal, because there are bad priests. And that can't be stopped. 
Now, now what's happening? Uh, I would like to make a parallel to the past, right, in history. We, we heard last time that the, the, the church, Catholic Church is like Israel was in the Old Testament, God's chosen people. And in the Old Testament, God would use a foreign army to punish his church. It says that right there in Deuteronomy, chapter 28. If you are not, if you do not obey my commandments, O Israel, I will send famine, plague, the sword, disease, and finally I will send my armies to punish you. And the destruction of Jerusalem was just that. God sent the Assyrian armies, they destroyed Jerusalem, laid it waste, and took the Jews into captivity into Babylon. And guess who they took? The hierarchy, the rich, the wealthy, the powerful, the influential. The poor, the meek, and the humble were left behind. The meek inherited the land. And so that's what's happening again today, right? The Pennsylvania grand jury, the media, the Department of Justice, that's God's army. And he will use it to punish his church for her good, for her healing. But if we're not careful, if we just sit by and point fingers and don't pray and fast and do penance, uh, once that army's done destroying the hierarchy, they'll come after us. And those evil men in the church, they deserve that. They're getting their just due. And it's far less than they'll get after death. We do need to pray for our hierarchy. To pray for our, our bishops in the church. Because good men will follow. So there's more. There's, a, there's much more than just this. The, 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 the problem is primarily spiritual. And in fact, I'll be giving a number of sermons in the following days, the weekdays at the 8.30 Masses. If you want to hear more, show up for 8.30 Mass. There'll be more tomorrow. Uh, but I wanted to give you a brief outline today and some statistics that you're not hearing anywhere else. If I could give you anything, I would just remind you as a recap, all the cases of, of clergy abuse from 1965 to the present, 50 years, is 11,000. The number of cases in the church last year, new cases, is four out of 18 million Catholic children and 60,000 priests. And the estimated yearly uh, public school abuse since 2000 is, is three and a half million. Some, some statistics. Sometimes, if you hear anybody accusing the church, you can use those. So let us assist God in his work of cleansing the church. Let us do our part. We must fast and pray and do penance. Pray the rosary, wear the brown scapular, pray the angelus three times a day. Say our daily prayers, do our daily spiritual reading. Go to confession once a month. This is what's going to be the rebuilding of the church. Do not fear, only believe. These times are hard, uh, but this too shall pass. God bless you all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.